Hey, what's up? This is Václav. Today I have received this package from Reolink in China. And inside it should contain a very interesting, very unique piece of hardware. So let's look inside. I'm going to just open it. And uh, let's see. So this starts pretty regular. So I'm going to just take out the manual, the front, and inside it contains a camera, but it's not a regular camera. If I look at that, the camera has two lenses. Let's look at that. That's very interesting. And as you know, in front of my house, I have this uh, tree which is stuck in the middle and I want to really see on two sides, to the left of the tree and to the right of the tree. So I'm really interested to see how it's going to work. Uh, and also, uh, I'd like to see how much area it covers. Uh, I was told that it doesn't cover fully 180 degrees, but should be pretty close to that. So let's look at that. Uh, the camera has interestingly two mounts from top and from the bottom so I'll have some flexibility mounting it it's pretty light and it's uh, I've opted for the PoE camera so it's powered over Ethernet so there's an Ethernet port and I can cover uh, I can uh, power it from there but there is also a supplemental uh, DC power so I can uh, power it from there as well so what else we have oops uh, so we have a mount it's pretty nice as well most of the cameras they do not have the mount so they have a wall mount which i can use to mount it on directly on the wall i guess it will be using this uh this anchor here and then it's got a cable and that's pretty much it oh there is even a screwdriver I installed the camera instead of my regular one. I didn't want to drill holes into my wall, so I installed that temporarily. Can't help it, but it reminds me of something. <laughs> to configure, I just open the railing up and it'll automatically find a new initialized camera. So I just uh, create a new device password, give it a name and be done. So let's look at them. I'm wondering how it's going to merge the image from the two cameras. It looks like it's showing uh, image only from one camera, but when I open it, I see it created two streams, one for each camera, so I can switch between them. Pretty simple, but I guess it works. Before I jump into Home Assistant, uh, let's see if I'd like to change some settings. Let's look around. In the display, uh, well, it's just the regular date and time, camera name. I will change the anti-flicker to 50 Hz because this is what we use in Europe. And uh, I will leave the image controls on default. Uh, let's see how it looks. Now on the stream, it offers a number of resolutions. I will leave it on 2560 by 1440. And I will not use the substream, so I'll leave it there. Now the motion detection, that's interesting. I can set up different sensitivities for different times. So it might be useful. But more importantly, there is a smart detection where you can detect person or a vehicle. So it has the same feature as the Reolink 820A. And I wonder if you're going to be able to make it work in Home Assistant this time. Now for the lights, this camera is a combination of two lights. It has a infrared light, which I usually turn off because of this tree in the middle of the frame. But this one has two cameras, so maybe I will leave it on and it'll avoid it. But more interestingly, this camera also has a full color night vision with a spotlight. And uh, I'm really wondering how it's going to work together with the infrared. But I'll leave that for testing at night. And, and there's the info. And for the surveillance, there is a couple of options uh, when the motion is detected. It can record video on the SD card. And obviously, I can set up the times and all the settings. Send email, upload to an FTP server. It's got a siren. I'm, I'm sure the neighbors are going to love me if I turn this on. 
and it can send a push notification to the mobile app uh, on the phone. And there's the network settings. Um, I can set up a time server, so it sets the time automatically. So I will definitely use that. And in the system, there's obviously user management. So what I can do is I can configure a user for the home assistant. So that's cool that it has access right management. And then the, uh, the maintenance where I can check whether I have the latest version of firmware, which I do because the camera has been just released. And I can also reboot or reset the device there. And that's for the configuration. So we can now add it to the Home Assistant. But before we do that, I'd like to configure the Reeling app to show the images in two columns. So I'd like to check whether the images seamlessly stitch one to the other. I didn't have the impression from the individual images, but from here, this is perfect. It looks like a one wide uh, angle image. So with that, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the uh, camera's IP address because I'm gonna need it for the configuration. Then I'm going to head to the configuration integration and add a new integration for the camera. I already have two rolling cameras through a rolling integration and then I have the front camera from the ONVIF integration. This is the Anke camera. And I think I can do both. So let's try the rolling integration first. So I'm going to add the Reeling integration at the camera IP address, username and password and hit submit and it should work. And it asked me uh, for the channel for the cameras. So it looks like it would like to configure each uh, stream separately. So I will select the first one first, give it a name. So the first one was the camera on the left. And indeed it did create the device uh, with the entity for the left uh, video stream. So I'm gonna rename it so I know which one it is. And it also created entities for the infrared light and motion detection uh, and uh, for the audio I can turn it on and off and let's check if the video stream works and it does indeed. So it was pretty smooth, pretty straightforward. So now we have to add another integration for the second stream. So I'm gonna enter again the same IP address, username, password, but this time I'm going to select the second stream and uh, I will rename it again. This time I will say this is the right one. And interestingly, when I open the device, it will actually add the stream to the same device. So now I have uh, one device with the two cameras. It just didn't add them automatically. I had to add them one after the other. So that's not bad. Now I can just add the entities to my Lovelace dashboard. Sometimes I get comment that I do things too complicated, so I'll do it simple this time. I'll just hit the button, add to Lovelace, press OK, and they will be automatically added and I can customize them later. Now with both the camera images and the motion detection binary sensors on the interface, let me see if that works. So I'm gonna walk outside the house and see if they pick me up. And it looks like they don't, uh, which doesn't surprise me. I know there's been a discussion on the real link uh, custom integration that is might not be fully functional. It's nothing to do with the camera, but there's still some work to do with the uh, real link integration. But never mind, the uh, motion detection works in the camera and in Home Assistant, I use Frigate anyhow. So it doesn't really matter for me right now. So this was using the Reolink uh, custom integration, but the camera also supports the OnVIF. So uh, let's try the core OnVIF integration. I'm gonna uh, edit through the integration page, add the camera name, enter the camera IP address. I think I need to change the port to 8000, which is the default uh, for the camera. Enter the username and password, hit submit, and the camera is added and uh, it already has uh, both streams. So it was much easier than through the real link. On the other hand, it's missing uh, the uh, binary sensors and the switches for the infrared and for the sound. Uh, the camera image works. Uh, so that was easier. And it also has uh, the substream, which are hidden by default. Finally, I'd like to test the camera at night. 
Uh, it's got the infrared light on by default and you left it on default, so it's on. You can see the tree there, which I was talking about. Uh, if it was just a single image, the tree was pretty much uh, in the middle of the frame and you could see nothing else. Now it's in the corner, so it's not as bad. If I turn it off, uh, well, there's a street light, so you could still see a pretty good image. Uh, it's in black and white, but this is the same as with the infrared. So I will have to decide whether I want to have the infrared on or off. Mm, doesn't make a big difference. I will leave it on the default right now. But more interestingly, uh, there is this uh, spotlight uh, which I can turn on. So I'll change it from auto to uh, scheduled. And here you can schedule it uh, based on a time. And it's not very convenient because it's dark at different times in the winter and the summer. And it doesn't look like I can control this uh, daylight from the Home Assistant, so I can't automate that. But at least we can turn it on and we can compare how the light looks like. So this is the maximum brightness and it looks pretty good. Look at that. So I think it's pretty comparable to the other night vision camera. I have seen. I think the light is quite intense, we can tune it down, but I think it's much better than the infrared. But I don't want the light to be on all the time, so maybe what we're gonna do is I'm going to go back to the default settings, because what it does by default, it's actually pretty smart. I can have the infrared light on, and it will turn on the spotlight when it detects motion. So let's test that. I'm going to uh, show both screens. So I'll walk outside the house and as soon as it detects the motion, it will turn on the daylight. So, and it's actually pretty smart. I, I actually like that better than the other camera I have that has the daylight on all the time. So this is much smarter. And when I leave after some time, it will turn the daylight back off and uh, it will turn on uh, the infrared light again. So that's good. So that was Reolink Duo. I get offers to review different devices quite often, different cameras, displays, Tuya devices. And I usually reject them really for two reasons. Uh, one is those videos, they really have low number of views, which means they're not very interesting for the audience of my channel, or, or maybe I'm not very good at making them. The second reason is uh, they are quite a lot of work and they add very little to my home automation, which means they probably add very little to your home automation as well, which at the end might be the same reason why those videos have low number of views. So I made a simple rule. I only uh, deal with devices which are unique, which add something new, which other devices do not have. Uh, in the past, it was the AI object detection. It was the night vision. And now the Reolink Duo with two cameras, but also they have the AI object detection and they have the night vision as well. So I actually enjoyed doing this video and I hope you enjoyed watching that. So that's it for today and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.